So if you've been reading the latest news about Boeing, it would appear that their biggest problem is a labor dispute, or rather a long-lasting strike that has really put a lot of Boeing's operations into a state of stasis, and there isn't any sign that this is going to get cleared up anytime soon. But actually, Boeing's woes extend far further than a run-of-the-mill labor dispute. Instead, Boeing's technology all over the planet, and indeed even in space, is failing. The most recent problem being a satellite that for some reason exploded, leaving debris in a variety of different orbits that could prove problematic sometime in the near future, and of course... Starliner, the problem that refuses to go away, the problem that Boeing, I think, would really like to just shut down, but they can't because of their contractual obligations to NASA, and so they just keep going further and further into the red on this project, leading, in my opinion, to an atmosphere of desperation with the people who are working on Starliner, which in turn may lead to a cataclysm sometime in the future with the loss of astronauts unless we just shut this thing down. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut, right now. So remember this, May of 2022, when Starliner took to the heavens for the second time, hopefully rectifying the issues that took place in the first flight, which was a horrible disaster, and the second flight, although it did substantially better, still had lots of problems. It took a considerable amount of time for it to dock with the ISS for reasons that were not immediately explained, but later on we discovered some Surprise, surprise, that there were thruster problems that led to difficulties with maneuvering the spacecraft. Keep in mind, this was two years prior to the most recent flight where Starliner experienced the same damn problems. And at this time, during the OF-2 flight and afterwards, Boeing began to realize that they were losing a lot of money on this project. And it was absolutely crucial that they get humans into this thing and start their contract of delivering astronauts to the ISS as rapidly as possible, but also to do it as affordably as possible. But that turned out to be a completely forlorn hope given the fact that extensive electric issues were later discovered with the spacecraft, insulation that could theoretically cause a fire, and so all of that had to be redone as well. So we've been waiting for the other shoe to drop, so to speak, on Boeing's latest announcements on the losses that they've been taking on Starliner, and it turned out to be pretty substantial. Another quarter of a billion dollars lost, and this is in addition to a $125 million loss that the company recorded in the second quarter of this year. What that means is, is over $1.85 billion has been lost on the Starliner program. And by the way, that includes the first half dozen flights that Starliner is supposed to make to the ISS. Boeing has essentially already been paid for those flights, meaning that there is no hope no hope at all of Boeing recouping their losses on this disaster. And so as a result, as they continue incomprehensibly trying to push forward with this project and get Starliner flying again with astronauts on board, I feel sorry for those people. Every dollar that Boeing spends on Starliner is simply driving them further into the red. And there is no way that Boeing is going to be able to recoup any of their investment in this project. No possibility whatsoever. And that's simply because there's no way that Starliner is going to carry out more than six missions to the International Space Station before it gets retired. Which means the only thing Boeing is trying to do here is restore their credibility, which is mission impossible at this point. And it really would make a great deal of sense for Boeing to simply shut down down this project completely if it wasn't for one annoying detail. 
Here we go. Lift off. We have ignition. We have ignition and we have lift off. Lift off, crew nine. Oh my God. It's absolutely pulling us apart. Holy God. Yeah, I'm never going to forget that. And once again, I need to thank everybody who made all of it possible. Yeah, it wasn't quite up to snuff as far as the data compression over the internet at the time, but still, what an amazing experience to see Crew 9 actually lift off. But my point is, the upper stage on this Falcon 9 actually malfunctioned. Fortunately, it was after the deployment of the Crew Dragon capsule, but still, Still, it malfunctioned and did not re-enter the atmosphere as planned and actually missed the re-entry corridor, something that got Falcon 9 grounded yet again. And so this incident, as insignificant as it might seem, has led me to conclude, and I think NASA to conclude as well, that we definitely need a backup for Crew Dragon. In my opinion, it is only a matter of time before something happens, either with the upper stage of Falcon 9 or with Crew Dragon itself, that will lead to some sort of delay, some sort of investigation before NASA will permit another crewed flight. It's just unreasonable to expect absolute perfection from anybody, even SpaceX. Therefore, we absolutely need a backup. It's just too bad that that backup is as horrid as Starliner. So as a result, it seems very unlikely that Boeing is going to be able to cancel this project. They're probably going to continue to bleed money, and they're probably going to continue to embarrass themselves with Starliner. However, that, strange as it may sound, is not nearly as embarrassing as what just happened in geosynchronous orbit with one of Boeing's most reliable reliable cash cows Intelsat satellites or the IS-33E satellite to be specific and as a result of this anomaly or this catastrophic explosion a service outage was experienced by a wide number of customers in Europe, Africa, and parts of the Asia-Pacific region because of the satellite going down. According to Intelsat, the satellite experienced an anomaly on October 19th, resulting in a loss of power and service to customers. And after further investigation with Boeing, it became clear that the satellite had suffered a complete loss. As a matter of fact, the government and the U.S. Space Force is now tracking a lot of space debris in geosynchronous orbit, and unfortunately, the disposition of that debris is a little different difficult to predict, meaning that the debris could wander into other regions of space as well. This has been a serious problem for quite some time, something that's just been getting worse and worse with every collision, with every satellite malfunction, and with every intentional use of an anti-SAT weapon by the Russians, the Chinese, or even the United States back in the 1990s that has created more and more space debris to interfere with our ambitions in low Earth orbit and beyond. Even though the U.S. Space Force says that there's no immediate threat. This event is compounding an already serious problem. And by the way, this satellite had been experiencing problems for a significant amount of time. For years, it had become clear that Intelsat 33E was utilizing significantly more propellant than was predicted in order for it to maintain its station keeping in geosynchronous orbit, meaning that its lifespan had dropped off pretty significantly and Boeing predicted that it would only last about 10 years, substantially less than its original design period. However, it didn't even last that long. And this is not the first incident like this in recent history either. It's worth noting that the first satellite in the Epic NG Intelsat 29E series, which Boeing also built, was recognized as a total loss in 2019 after just three 
years in operation. The cause of the failure was attributed to a fuel leak caused either by a meteoroid impact or a wiring defect that led to an electrostatic discharge during a solar storm. Regardless, this is just adding to Boeing's miserable track record in space recently. So difficult to believe that Boeing is going through these kinds of problems right now, given their spectacular successes in the, what is now becoming the distant past, things like Saturn V and also the Space Shuttle. Yeah, the Space Shuttle did have its failures, but overall, it was a very, very successful program that carried out some of the most spectacular missions in spaceflight history, and it's more than 30 years in space. However, those days are obviously long gone, and there's one really important Boeing project right now that NASA is relying heavily on, and that, of course, is SLS. And amazingly, in spite of all the money that's been put into it, and in spite of all of the delays that SLS has experienced, up to this point, it appears that SLS is at least doing its job. On the one launch that it carried out, its maiden launch, SLS admittedly did extremely well. The only part of the SLS system that didn't quite perform up to snuff was the heat shield on the Orion, but Boeing didn't build that. So it could be argued that Boeing does a pretty good job when they have limitless money to spend, because keep in mind, that was a cost plus contract where Boeing can essentially spend all the money they need to to get the job done right. But if you're talking about fixed price contracts as Star Starliner is, keep in mind, no matter how much money Boeing goes into the red on that project, they can't bill the government, at least not officially, so we shouldn't have to spend any more taxpayer money on Starliner, but with SLS, Boeing can just keep billing and billing and billing until the job gets done. So can Boeing make a comeback? Is there any chance that Boeing is going to regain any of its relevance in spaceflight like it had in the past? Well, I seriously doubt it. But at the same time, so I can at least give a little bit of acknowledgement to the type of work that Boeing used to do, let's go ahead and re-watch this footage that I just showed you, at least the most exciting parts, to give you an idea of just how spectacular Boeing's work used to be.
The super heavy booster catch may have been more impressive, but that's still really cool. Until next time, stay angry about space. <laughs>